Well, essentially, what I did uh, almost a year ago now, it was uh, December 9th of uh, 2013, um, I, I attempted to intervene on behalf of a family in Afghanistan that has experienced the unspeakable trauma of, of witnessing loved ones being blown to pieces uh, in a in an, uh, drone strike. Um, one member of that family, a man named Raz Mohammed, uh, last year wrote a personal plea to the United States uh, courts and the government, as well as the military, uh, to stop these drone strikes on his people. I um, so I, I and two. Mark, I want to interrupt because we do have a clip of Raz Mohammed in his own words. Sure. I think drones are not good. I remember how, in my village, a drone attack killed my brother-in-law and four of his friends. It was truly sad. A beautiful life was buried, and the sound of crying and sorrow arose from peaceful homes. I say that this is inhumane today. The idea of humanity has been forgotten. Why do we spend money like this? Why don't we use alternative ways? The international community says that drones are used to kill the Taliban. This is not true. We should see the truth. Today, it's hard to find the truth, and no one listens to the ordinary voice of the people. Those are the words of Raz Mohammed from Afghanistan. So talk about now, Markoville, what you did. Well, um, we took Raz's uh, written plea and we walked uh, peacefully and orderly to the outside gate of the uh, 174th attack wing at Hancock Airfield um, with the, the sole purpose of trying to deliver this plea directly to one of the base commanders, whose name is uh, Colonel Earl Evans. Um, we, uh, we brought—it was Advent, the season of Advent in the Christian churches, and we brought along a, uh, a litany of uh, uh, prayers for uh, saints and martyrs. Um, we brought uh, poinsettia and a dozen roses along with Raz's plea, um, and we simply wanted to have that received by the base commander. The uh, base personnel indicated that that uh, Colonel Evans was not going to come out. And so then we simply asked if we could have Raz's plea uh, received and acknowledged. At that point, the military personnel were, uh, were ordered not to engage us anymore in conversation. And so we, uh, we decided to just remain there until we received a response. Um, and about an hour later, the local police came and, and arrested us. <clears throat> um, I should say that the, the drone base located within the, the jurisdiction of this court, where I'm appearing today for sentencing, um, it, it, it is operating beyond the, the reach of law. And that was really the reason why I chose to go uh, to the base. I wanted uh, Raz's uh, plea to be, to be heard in a court. And this appeared to be the only way that a court would hear it. And in fact, it was, it was read in open court. Uh, uh, by one of the military personnel who I cross-examined. <clears throat> uh, and, Mark, when you hear this uh, previous segment that we had of the report by Reprieve, that an average of 28 unidentified uh, people are being killed for every single uh, targeted uh, drone strike, uh, uh, your reaction? Well, you know, we've known, uh, and it's been reported here on Democracy Now! and in previous reports over the years that, as I said, this, the, the drone program operates, uh, it, it's, it's based on a foundation of criminality. I mean, the, the United States government, through its drone program, is claiming the legal right to targeted assassinations, extrajudicial killings, um, uh, indiscriminate killing, and the targeting deliberate targeting of civilians. Uh, for example, e even the military admits that one of its um, uh, modes of operation in drone strikes uh, is, is something that they have called double tapping, which, which is that uh, after striking a target, the drone is directed back to that same 
uh, target 20 minutes or a half an hour later in order to, uh, to strike again uh, after uh, first responders have come uh, to help the wounded. Um, and it, it, so it's, it's on a foundation of criminality, and as we've experienced in the n numerous um, public actions uh, and arrests at, the, at uh, Hancock Airfield, um, the, the, this program operates beyond the reach of courts and law. And, and what we're trying to do is to get uh, courts to engage the criminality uh, in which the United States government is engaged through the drone program. How unusual is Hancock? And how central is it well, to the drone uh, program? Well, in large part, the drone program is operated in secrecy. Uh, we do know that, uh, that the Hancock uh, drone base, the 174th Attack Wing, uh, focuses its missions on Afghanistan. Um, and they're weaponized drones. They carry Hellfire missiles and 500-pound bombs. Um, it's very difficult to get specific information about, uh, you know, which attacks are launched or directed from which uh, drone base. There are about a dozen in the, uh, throughout the United States that we know about. Um, and we're trying to, you know, just bring this to the light. We're trying that, uh, uh, to have this uh, brought to the scrutiny of, of, uh, of the courts. Um, now, I'm going to court this afternoon, uh, about seven hours from now. I was convicted of, of uh, five separate charges for simply walking peacefully to the front uh, outside gate of, a, uh, of the uh, drone base. Um, what were those five? And, uh, what were those charges? Five charges. Uh, uh, two counts of disorderly conduct, one of trespass, which, by the way, are conflictual charges because the one requires that you, uh, the act take place on public property and the other on private property. Um, obstruction of governmental administration, uh, which is the obstruction of lawful government administration. Um, which we contend, and I contended in court, uh, that the, the operation behind the gates of, of Hancock is not, is not lawful. And um, I was also charged with a contempt of court charge based on uh, a kind of a cynical manipulation of the law uh, that this court has engaged in by, by issuing orders of protection on behalf of the base commander, Colonel Evans. Um, against protesters, as if we are a uh, physical threat uh, to Colonel Evans. So uh, they've, they've actually manipulated these uh, uh, domestic violence laws, essentially, um, to try to intimidate people uh, and keep them from going uh, to exercise their rights outside the base.